Hello, hello everyone. Hi. I am here in the makeshift studio of stampthingsintoexistence.com. This is Anna Walker coming to you live from my mother's basement where I have a, a little mini studio set up and I am in the process of laying out the second layer to create a piece of pre-felt to make another one, maybe two collars, to set collars with. And I wanted to show you this really fun new technique that I learned from Nadia's bow in um, Hungary, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I learned this technique from her at the last two years felt camp and I finally was able to give it a try and oh my gosh, it is a game changer. So I'm laying down the second layer. The first layer was laid out going this way. I'm laying down another layer going this way. And then I will show you how this wonderful technique works. And underneath, on top of my table, I have a piece of very, very, very thin painter's tarp, plastic painter's tarp. Now, you could use the heavier stuff, but I don't know that you would get the same result. Nadia recommends using this super thin painter's plastic, and I think that it is the magic it, as to uh, how this all works together. So, I've got this piece of painter's cloth, and it is, it is really thin. It's like about, <coughs> it's about the thinness of, um, plastic wrap that you would use to uh, wrap up your leftovers, okay? Sorry, I needed to take a quick drink before we get busy with this um, active felting. So I have one long piece and I'm gonna fold this over and make a little sandwich after I wet down this fabric, this fiber. It's not fabric yet, but it will be. So in here, I have my solution of soapy water. It's just some Castile, liquid Castile soap that is peppermint essential oil scented, which absolutely just brightens my day. I love the smell of peppermint. You can use unscented, of course. I like using the Castile soap because it gives me a, um, a more natural feel. Now I wouldn't generally press this liquid out with just my hands without a piece of plastic over it. I'm not putting the plastic on because I don't want to screw anything up. So I'm just making sure that I've got plenty of liquid in here to wet down all of the fibers without it being too sloshy. You don't want it sloshy. We just want it wet enough to get everything wet. And I think that we are good to go here. And I could easily make a skin on this, but you will see that it's not really going to be necessary. Now I have a towel underneath me here. And I'm gonna use my hands on my wonderful tie-dye batik apron here. And I'm going to take the rest of the plastic wrap and I'm going to fold it right over the top. Now I need to make sure that I've got plastic touching plastic all the way around. If it's not even, that's okay, but I've got to have plastic touching plastic. Because what I'm going to do next is just take this rolled up towel without squishing anything. I got things squished a little bit, so I need to pull a little bit loose again. This is the tricky part. Because we want to make sure that we've got everything nicely wetted down, that we don't really have anything shifting, and that we get all of the air out. All of the air out is the secret to this process. I'm going to move this off. I think I might have to lift and 
just just a bit here. Because that fabric is right next to the edge. I want to pull this out just a little bit more. There we go. Alright, so let's try and roll. Oh, I did it again. Okay, so I think I've got all the air out and now is when we start doing the magic. Now, I use, oh, my Castile soap's up there. I guess I have to use these. I use something to weight down the two edges. Pull this this way just a bit. And then I just pick up this part and I just start flipping it and banging it against the table. And this is the process making sure that all of your fibers are wetted down, that you've got all the air out of your sandwich, and then you start flicking. And what's happening is as you're flicking, the fibers have nowhere to go but to connect through each other. And so the felting process is happening in between the two pieces of plastic. You don't have to roll, you don't have to scrub until the end, but this is how I have been making my pre-felts for these descent collars. And then just like any other kind of felt, if I were rolling, I would come at this from all four directions. I'm gonna do the same thing with this flicking motion. And so I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn, I'm going to put my weights down on the end again, and then I'm going to start flicking some more. <clears throat> I was gobsmacked when I tried this the first time to create a piece of pre-felt. <coughs> it surprised me to no end how much this gentle flicking was creating the felt that I was looking to make. Now, I have found times where I've had to readjust because my felt has peeked out of the outside of one of the edges, and so I've had to reposition a little bit. But by and large, this pretty much, once you get all that air out, this just, the plastic just attaches to the other piece of plastic with that moisture that's in there. And it just allows you to continue working all the way around. Again, I'm gonna bring this up, turn it a quarter of a turn, put my weights down on that side, and then start flicking from this side. Now, because I'm making a pre-felt, I am not um, counting out a full hundred um, flicks. I'm doing more like 50 flicks per side. And then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna do another 50 flicks per side. My hands are getting slippery because of the soapy water. But just this gentle flicking motion is all you need to get this felting action to start. Now this would be a great way to work on pre-felts that you wanted to use in another project down the line. You could spend an afternoon and you could create a number of different pre-felts that would get you going um, towards some other projects. You could take your mini bat or your full-size bat that you've ordered from the website, for instance, and you could turn those into pre-felts that you can then cut up and use in other in felting projects down the road. Maybe you have an afternoon where you do nothing but create pre-felts, and then you've got pre-felts ready to go for the next time that you're getting ready to start a felting project. And you can choose from those beautiful pre-felts that you've created, especially if you're using some of the bats that I've created for you to do just exactly that with. Reminder, if I hadn't been, you know, clear enough, 
There are mini bats and there are full size bats on the website, stabthingsintoexistence.com. And I do have them with me and I am just four miles down the road from the post office and I can get them shipped out pretty much as soon as you order them. So if you've seen some bats that you like, now is the time to get them on hand. All right, I'm feeling like I've done 50 all the way around. I'm just gonna take this, flip it right on over. I can see that the agitation is working because I'm seeing the bubbles underneath here. And now I'm just gonna flick some more. And this time I'm gonna flick without the weights on. And this way I can just lift the entire piece and flop it right on down on the table. Now you will want to have splatter guards because you will have a little bit of that soapy water um, come out. But remember, that's why I didn't have a huge amount of water, unlike when you're using things like bubble wrap. And if you've got excess water, it comes out when you are rolling. Well, with this, you don't have to roll. You just have to flick. And it's that gentle flicking that will get that agitation happening and make it possible for this pre-felt to start up. Get turned over, quarter of a turn, and we're gonna start it from here. Now remember, pre-felt can still be pulled apart, but it holds together enough that you are able to cut it into shapes. So you could create pre-felts to um, put any kind of a shape onto your project. Maybe you're laying out a beautiful little wall hanging and you want to have little cookie cutter shapes. Take the cookie cutter and trace around it so that you can cut it out of your pre-felt pieces. Then lay it down, lay your design down and felt away as normal. All right, I'm gonna go through to the other side. Two more sides to do, and then we're gonna take a look at this pre-felt and see how it's doing. has one hand on one side and she's flipping it from the other side like this so she can get that rippling going even faster. That's why when I started out I used the jug as a little bit of a weight on one end. You could certainly have clamps on one side of your table that could hold your piece and then you could just unclamp and move to the next location. But however it works for you to have those pieces positioned so that you can get that wonderful little rippling effect here. That rippling effect is what's going to cause this to felt up into that pre-felt for us. And I'm a little easier with that with my right hand than with my left hand. Go figure. Look at this, pre felt That quick and that easy. And we have a luxurious piece of pre felt that we can use in a felted project. Um, in my case, this is probably going to create two different 
descent powders. And I will uh, come to you tomorrow and show you the next stage of this game. Obviously, I'm going to rinse this out gently and let it dry for a bit. And then tomorrow, I'm not going to scrub it because I don't want it to fold. Okay? Felting is the first part where we get the fibers to just start to come together. I could still pull this apart. There's still a little bit of give in between the layers, so but it's stuck together enough, it's felted together enough that I have a fabric here, okay? If I pull hard enough, I could pull this loose still. But tomorrow I'm going to show you how we're going to take these pieces and we're going to create um, a felted collar. We're going to lay out black fiber, black merino fiber underneath, and we'll have designs in the purple that will be on top. And that'll be the next stage of these particular descent collars. So I hope you'll be with me again tomorrow evening. Tomorrow I'm going to come to you at 5 instead of 6 because at 6 o'clock is when I am scheduled to talk with my felted experience people if they're available. So I will see you all at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Until then, I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you soon. Bye.